your Bibles, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Let me read it for you. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. Verse 15. The person with the Spirit makes judgments about all things, but such a person is not subject to merely human judgments. I've been meditating and thinking about these verses for the last couple of weeks now. And God was ministering to me in a special way. I have not heard much sermons on these verses, so it was very difficult initially to explore. What does that mean? A person with the Spirit makes judgment about all things, and he is not subject to any man's judgment. What is it? Let me start off with the popular understanding that we have about New Covenant. The words used in, for example, Hebrews, this is a better covenant. In 2 Corinthians 3, when Paul is writing about the new covenant, he says we have better promises. If the old covenant laws were written on tablets, new covenant laws are written on hearts. The ministry of the old covenant was letter. Ministry of death. Whereas ministry of the new covenant is not letter, spirit, which brings life. So we know that we are in better days. We have better promises. This is new covenant. But many people know this covenant only as a covenant where more miracles take place. Where you have the spiritual gifts exercised more than the old covenant. In the old covenant it says about in 2 Corinthians 3, it was fading glory. But in the new covenant it says... It's permanent glory. It's not fading. If the ministry under Moses, old covenant was glorious, Paul writes, now we are taken from glory to glory where there is a permanency when it comes to the understanding of glory. We know the old covenant was external. Now we talk about the internal transformation. What is the glory of the new covenant? With all these words described by Paul and other apostles. The prophets, Jeremiah 31, you know that popular verse, Jeremiah 31, 33 and Ezekiel 36, 27, where the prophets have said, there is a day coming when I will give you heart of flesh, not stone, where I will write my laws in your heart, I will move you to obey my decrees. Prophets have said it. Apostle Paul have said it. Letter of Hebrews, writer have said it. What makes us so special from the old covenant saints? From Moses, from Elijah, from Elisha, from Ezekiel. What is the glory? What are we talking about? I have a feeling an area where we have no light upon is the area of judging. New covenant believers, because we are in better days, should be able to judge correctly. All aspects of life. We are in better days. We should not be like Old Testament person who may make mistakes with their judgment. We should judge correctly because we have the Holy Spirit on all of us. Where Holy Spirit was given on selected individuals in the Old Testament, Joel prophesied a day is coming when Spirit will be poured on all flesh. There is no difference. Young, old, men, women, no difference. All of us have the Spirit. And the promise is 2.15. The person with the Spirit. Meaning, all of us, we make judgments about things. This is the glory of the new covenant. Where we are capable of making right judgments but unfortunately the church at large have missed this angle of making right judgments we sometimes end up making judgments like the world 
there is no difference the way we judge things the world a church an individual there is absolutely no difference but we say i am in a better covenant that is the irony maybe for a minute if you could turn with me to second corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 i want you to see look at a word there when paul describes about the new covenant and we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the lord's glory we are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory so i want you to mark that word transforming the glory of the new covenant is there is a transformation happening inside which was not happening in the old covenant inwardly there is a transformation so much so that there are potential image bearers of god in the new covenant we can transform and become like jesus able to make right judgments because jesus made right judgment about things the aspect of transforming and becoming like christ many a times we talk about the character formation we talk about we must love like jesus we must forgive like jesus becoming like christ is not just some virtues but it is also making right judgments that transformation should lead us the spirit indwelling in us should lead all of us seated here today to make right judgments coming back to our text first corinthians chapter 2 verse 6 following first corinthians 2 6 following it's all about judgment you see that word repeating almost every other chapter look at chapter 4 and verse 3 and 4 our text is 2 14 15 there we have seen that word person with the spirit make right judgments now you look at chapter 4 and verse 3 and 4 i care very little if i am judged by you or by any human court again the word comes what is the word judged a person with the spirit make judgments but paul says i care very little if i am judged by you and verse 4 my conscience is clear but that does not make me innocent it is the lord who judges the word judge judges being repeated in chapter 5 and verse 12 13 look at that what business is it to mind to judge those outside the church again the word judge what business is it for me to judge those outside the church are you not to judge those inside we have read and studied corinthian letter i'm sure several times all of you but have you noted this an important aspect a thread running throughout this letter is judge correctly you are called to judge and in chapter 6 verse 2 look at 6 verse 2 or do you not know that the lord's people will judge the world verse 3 do you not know that we will judge angels verse 5 i say this to shame you is it possible that there is nobody among you wise enough to judge it's all about judging first corinthians 2 6 onwards is about judge judge correctly and chapter 7 verse 25 continues now about words and i have no command from the lord but i give a judgment again the word comes in verse 40 in my judgment chapter 10 verse 15 the word continues again 10 15 i speak to sensible people judge for yourself a new covenant believer should be able to judge things correctly that is the glory of the new covenant we are in better days we are capable of making right judgments that is the way of becoming like christ when we make right judgments we are imitating jesus we are becoming like jesus in our judgments now the question is to whom is this letter written are these people who are new in the church are these people who have just come taken baptism they don't know anything about spirituality first corinthians 1 verse 7 it says therefore you do not lack 
any spiritual gift you name it spiritual gift like prophecy healing casting out of demons discernment you name it any amount of spiritual gifts that you can think of is there in the church they are blessed with all spiritual gifts and they don't have the capacity to judge correctly what are we saying my dear people of god this is a master technique of the devil by concealing us from an important way of life in the new covenant we should be able to judge correctly it is possible to exercise all spiritual gifts i have not seen many churches like that where you have all spiritual gifts exercised corinthian church was like that all spiritual gifts and chapter 3 chapter 3 who were the pastors chapter 3 verse 6 i planted the seed i cannot think of any other pastor better than paul who is planting the seed i planted the seed paul says apollos watered it by the ministry of god's word who are these people they are the most blessed people under the sun they have all spiritual gifts they have paul as the founding pastor they have apollos as the pastor who taught them god's word but despite all these good things paul is writing a person with the spirit must make judgment about all things meaning they are in error when it comes to judging things the contrast here listen carefully the contrast in corinthian letter the first part is not between believers and unbelievers we like that contrast isn't it in the church oh unbelievers are perishing we are being saved we like that contrast unbelievers don't have hope we have hope unbelievers don't have jesus i have jesus the contrast is not between believers and unbelievers the contrast is between matured believers and infants look at chapter 2 and verse 6 first corinthians 2 6 we do however speak a message of wisdom among the mature corinthian people had all the gifts but they were not mature in 31 in 31 brothers and sisters i could not address you as people who live by the spirit but as people who are still worldly mere infants they were supposed to be mature but they ended up being infants the contrast is not believers and believers the contrast is mature believers and infants it is possible my dear people of god to be an infant after 10 years of coming to the church it is possible to be an infant in christ even after being in faith for 40 years how do you know that a person is infant look at the way he judge you can never make out by looking at his gifts whether he is mature or infant there are many infants who exercise spiritual gifts corinthian church is the best example they are infants but they have all spiritual gifts maturity is not determined by the gifts we operate all of us seated here today my prayer is that when the sermon is preached towards the end of the sermon we should be able to evaluate our own life the question is not do you speak in tongues the question is not are you baptized the question is are you mature christian the question is are you an infant or are you a mature believer who is able to judge correctly the contrast is between spiritual believers might be confused with that spiritual believers we thought all believers are spiritual not all believers are spiritual spiritual believers on one side and carnal believers on other side chapter 3 1 will give you that contrast 3 1 brothers and sisters i could not address you as people with the spirit meaning i could not address you as spiritual believers but i am addressing you as carnal christians worldly christian sarkinos a word used there you are of the flesh you had the spirit that is how you got regenerated 
that is how you got baptism all that but you are not being led by the spirit an important area which we need to be careful is my dear people of god holy spirit has worked in our lives all of us that's why we are here because there is active spirit working in you but the question is are you led by the spirit to make right judgments or is it spirit working for an ecstatic momentary feeling when the worship is on little bit of shivering little bit of jumping little bit of noise is that what spirit is doing in you or are you able to make right judgments are you an infant or a matured believer are you a spiritual believer or a carnal believer who is also a believer but is not guided yielded to the holy spirit and the most dangerous contrast is this my dear people of god it is not between mature and infants it is not between spiritual believers and carnal believers what surprises me is 214 you know in the church there are not only carnal believers who had the spirit but they are not yielding to the spirit you have another category you know what is that other category 214 a person without the spirit does not accept the things meaning there are a group of people in the church who are acting like they have no spirit the contrast is between spiritual and people who do not have the spirit carnal 31 is different from 214 31 people are those people who have the holy spirit regeneration happened but they are not yielding to the holy spirit on a daily basis there are different greek words used here 214 people are those people who have no regeneration no spirit in them unfortunately there are people in the church like that you look at them they are present on a sunday morning but they are not infants they are not carnal they are like people without the spirit altogether and who are these people they have the gifts and they are acting as though they do not have the spirit is it possible it is very much possible we should learn that lesson it is possible to do healing ministry and still go to hell matthew 7:22 says it very clear loud in my name Jesus says on that day many will say that we have done miracles in your name we have healed people casted out demons and Jesus is going to tell them plainly i never knew you because you were infants carnal you acted like people without the spirit 21st century church the danger we are facing is this the danger is not the fact that we don't have noise there is big noise in the house of god the danger we are facing is not people are not speaking in tongues no many are speaking in tongues so much so that there are chaos at times first corinthians 12 and 14 has to be read aloud in some pentecostal churches first corinthians 12 and 14 if an unbeliever walks in he will get mad what is happening all that chaos is there what we are missing is not speaking in tongues what we are missing is not music what we are missing is spirit working to make right judgments my prayer is that god is calling us today to be mature believers not to be infants at that state i usually use that illustration which everybody can understand if your 5 year old son holds your hand and go to the supermarket and say i need five star you be happy proud as a dad you only need one five star shall i get you one more at the age of 10 if he ask for five star you may look at him but still you will get him but at the age of 25 if he is holding your hands dad i want five star if he is on the stage wedding is happening and the food is served wife started food and he is looking at mom can i have food then there is a problem right there in all other aspects we are able to judge maturity is needed maturity is needed my child will grow and make right judgments but only when it comes to spirituality we are passive about making right judgments you check 
If you plant and if after two years, three years, if it is not bearing fruit, you may think of cutting it, chopping it down. Because waste of effort, waste of space. But how about spirituality? Some of us are in Christ for the last 10 years, 5 years. The question today is not how many years have you been in church. The question is, are you a matured Christian? Are you a person who is able to make right judgments guided by the Spirit? The problem is growth, my dear people of God. Chapter 3, verse 6 and 7, the word growth appears twice. Look at 3, 6. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. Has God made some mistake with some of us? Because pastor has planned it. That happened. We all know that happened. And watering also is happening. Every Sunday. Enough of watering. But why is growth not happening? Is the question. Verse 7 also. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. Growth, maturity. Growth, able to make right judgments. That is where God is calling us. <clears throat> Look at that verse carefully. Spiritual man, verse 15. Spiritual man make right judgments about all things, I like that word, about all things. It's not right judgment about worship. It's not right judgment about preaching. It's right judgment about all things. World, money, position, vehicle, house, every area. He is able to make right judgments. And that verse continued to say, spiritual man is not subject to any man's judgment. What does that mean? Look at that word 215, second part. He makes judgment about all things, but such a person, who is that such a person? A spiritual man, a matured man. He is not subject to merely human judgments. You know what does that mean? Others are not able to make right judgment about him. That is what it means. He makes right judgments. If you are a matured believer, you will make right judgments. But other people of the world, they will make wrong judgments about you. Are you able to understand what I am saying? If you are a spiritual man, if you are a matured believer, you will make right judgments about everything. But person from the world who doesn't have the spirit can never make right judgments about you. In his eyes, you may be deteriorating day by day. In his eyes, you may be a loser. In his eyes, you may be a failure, a big nobody. A person with the spirit make right judgments. He is not subject to any man's judgment, meaning others will never be able to make right judgments about the man of God. Let's get into details of what Paul is saying here. My dear people of God, we should be able to make right judgment because of chapter 2 verse 16. In 2.16 it says, we have the mind of Christ. We are able to make right judgments because when spirit is bestowed upon us, mind of Christ, meaning ability to think like Christ, ability to look at things like the way Christ looks at. And chapter 2 verse 10, we should be able to make right judgment because we have access, look at 2.10, the second part, the spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. Did you see that word? If you are a matured believer, if you are a spirit-led believer, you have the mind of Christ, you have access to deep things of God. That is why you are able to make right judgments. And your judgment will sound foolish, 
for a worldly man because it is discerned only by the spirit you know why we should make right judgment why we should make right judgment some of you might be thinking pastor you're making it as a big thing new covenant believer it's about judging judging why you know why it is such an important thing because god judges the world when we are transformed we should become like god god judges the world you know in two areas god judges the world in the area of wisdom in the area of power god judges the world look at chapter 1 and verse 20 that 120 will give you the feel of what god is doing the question asked here where is the wise person paul is asking where is the wise person where is the teacher of the law where is the philosopher of this age next sentence has not god made foolish the wisdom of the world has not god judged the world in the sight of the world power is when you win battles power is when you ride on horse but has not god made that wisdom nothing when jesus was riding on the donkey when he was crucified on the cross you see the power of god the wisdom of god he was judging the world that is not power this is power in other words god was redefining those words wisdom is no more having lot of knowledge wisdom is this when you give your life for others that is wisdom power is not when you defeat power is when you are defeated a redefinition of word power and wisdom because when you come to verse 24 look at 124 but to those whom god has called both jews and greeks christ is the power of god and the wisdom of god tell me who in the world would be able to look at christ and say on the cross we see the power of god we see the wisdom of god nobody they will never be able to judge correctly because this is foolishness this is powerlessness but god judges the world the entire world those people who do not have the holy spirit god was judging you want salvation you come to the cross it is no more by going to a powerful man who came out of the cross it is by coming to a person who endured the cross world would have seen jesus as a powerful man after the nail pierced hands all that jesus is all of a sudden coming out the world would have looked at jesus and say wow powerful and all the soldiers standing there are burned the world would have said power but the soldiers there looking at jesus spitting on him powerless it's like defeated it's like foolishness god is judging the world god judges the world not only by christ on the cross god judges the world by choosing us you know that when god chose you and me god was actually judging the world what kind of people are chosen chapter 1 verse 27 look at first corinthians 127 but god chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise god chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong god chose the lowly things of the world and the despised things the things that are not to nullify the things that are what is god doing when god chose us i know one thing god chose me to judge the world how pastor god chose you to judge the world foolish guy that i am weak that guy that i am when i stand with the word of god god is judging the world you don't need eloquent 
preaching you don't need to be very affluent you just need to be available god can accomplish wonders through you why are you seated here today it was part of god judging the world you look at yourself in the mirror and you see my color of the skin my height my family i wish i would have been in bangalore 20 years back i wish i would have studied that some of you god was concealing you so that you will not get much exposure if you got a much exposure you wouldn't have been here today i met a family like that the other day that's when it suddenly clicked the parents have told about their son a very lovely man is a man of god i have not seen many like him the parents told pastor our son when he was growing up we were looking at him concerned about him something is wrong with him he is able to do everything other than studies you ask him for any help he will be the first person to be there helping out you asking about anything that is happening in bangalore he will be the first person to know about it but studies somehow it's not by being lazy he studies all that something happens so much so that he failed in 10 standard and his dad has a high profile job and it seems he used to when he was growing up itself he used to take dad's uniform with a cap all that dress up and the parents used to look at him and say son we wish you were like that to become like your dad but it looks like you will never make it 10th standard you are not able to clear then the parents continued to say now we know why it all happened god was concealing him so that he would use him later some things that you did not get in life some exposure you did not get some interview that you did not clear god wanted to judge the world to keep you in a low profile so that you can accomplish great things for the lord by the power of the holy spirit i am a living testimony of this my dear people of god 13 years back brother would you go up and share i would faint if pastor would say in advance you are going to bring greetings or something i wouldn't come to the church that sunday sure my dad was a pastor and so believers used to ask why pastor's son is like this he is not able to pray he is not able to lead in worship kind of a useless guy i grew up hearing that but my godly mother used to always say there is a time for the lord lord will accomplish his plans through him now i am able to see god you are great god was judging the world it was not through smart people always it is through nobodies that god will accomplish great things if it is written on you if it is written on back of you nobody you are qualified to be used by god because god is in a business of judging the world god need eloquent people like paul god need wise people like paul only when they are broken and when they say i am a nobody that is the moment when god begin to use them god doesn't call the qualified he qualifies whom he calls he calls the nobodies he calls the somebodies but make them nobody so that he can judge the world i am 100% sure in my spirit god is speaking to some of you very personally today god is in a business of judging the world that is why a new covenant believer also should make right judgments god judges the wisdom of the world power of the world by the cross god is showing the world look at the cross this is my power this is my wisdom and god is showing all of us to the world these are the people that i am choosing you will not choose us the world wouldn't choose many of us to be their brand ambassadors but the king of kings are say, he's saying i need you i need you the nobody come i want to judge the world you know paul too judged the world it is not only god judging the world by cross and by people whom he has chosen paul too judged the world 
Look at chapter 2 and verse 3. 2, 3. I came to you in weakness with great fear and trembling. I am surprised when I read that verse. Who is saying this? A student of Gamaliel who had all the law, everything in his head. Top of the head he could quote verses. Somebody who grew up in that very spiritual atmosphere. Not many will get the opportunity to be a student of Gamaliel those days. Paul made it to be a student. But he is saying, I come to you with fear, with trembling. And in verse 4, my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. Meaning what? Paul was judging the wisdom of the world by being a weak man who was trembling. He did not use the persuasive skills which other orators used. Look at chapter 2 and verse 13. This is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, explaining spiritual realities with Spirit-taught words. I wish all the Bible colleges would take more time to teach this. It is not through our brilliant quotation that transformation will take place. Quotations are good. Stories are good. Titles are good. Ultimately, it is the power of God who would convict a sinner. Otherwise, we are thinking like a fool. With my eloquence, I can persuade people. No! Paul was judging the eloquent speakers who would develop their oratory skill. Come, challenge. Paul is saying, no, I am not like that. I came to you with fear and trembling. I'm not saying without preparation or stumble, no. All that work has to be done. But when we walk to the pulpit with fear and trembling, because we cannot do it, God has to show up. God has to work in the life of a sinner. It is not my words. It is not my eloquence. It is not my big, big, big stories. Sometimes one word is enough. God will work. God judged the world by cross. God judged the world by choosing us. Paul is judging the world by becoming a weak man. Not with eloquent speaker. Now is the time we are in the heart of the message. Listen carefully. Because God judged the world, because Paul judged the world, we have to judge the world. 1 Corinthians 6.2, read again. 1 Corinthians 6.2. Do you not know, people with all the spiritual gifts, do you not know that the Lord's people will judge the world? Yes, I know when we read that verse, immediate thought is at the end. When Christ returns, we will judge the world and we are happy to live the way we want because judging will happen later on. Wait a minute. People who will judge the world one day should start judging now itself. That is the mark of a mature Christian. Mature Christian a Christian, a believer who is growing should be able to judge correctly because 1 Corinthians 2, 14 and 15 says a person with the spirit make judgment about all things. One of the key basic principles about judging is given to us in chapter 3 and verse 12. Look at 3 verse 12. This is a foundational principle for anybody seated here. If you want to grow in your spirituality, if you want to be matured, if you want to be like God who judges, if you want to be like Paul who judges, 3.12 is foundational. Look at 3.12, 1 Corinthians 3.12. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stone, wood, hay or straw, their work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light. Wait a minute. 
six materials are introduced to us what are these six materials it could be divided into two the first three talks about gold silver costly stones durable costly which will stand fire the next three wood hay or straw not durable less expensive will not stand fire an infant will never be able to tell us which is more valuable you show an infant a truck full of wood hay and straw and show him diamond he would say i want that because for an infant it is quantity that matters when we grow when we become spiritual believers not carnal when we become mature believers not infants we should be able to discern this is valuable this is not valuable in spirituality we should be able to discern let's talk about the church a spiritual man will judge all things he will judge church often it is said a church is not measured by its seating capacity the success of a church is measured by its sending capacity he said like that but i tend to disagree with that when you grow and become an adult at some level you will say yeah it's not seating capacity it is sending capacity but when you become little more old when you allow the spirit to work little more you would say the church is not measured by seating the church is not measured by sending church is measured by the capacity to make disciples because sending we can do for our glory too an infant will never be able to discern this an infant will look at a church wow this many people are coming there must be god here that is the command of an infant then you go and see some other places where people come in lakhs they are not christian christ centered places they are going for miracles there several points in india we should be a fool to think the more number of people then it is more blessed most of the time it is the other way when you grow and become matured you know what is valuable what is less valuable a spiritual man will make right judgment about a church a spiritual man wouldn't be going to the parking station and say this church is blessed because there are many cars that is the command of an infant an infant would go to the parking lot and say wow wow all these brands here this church must be a blessed church that is the typical mark of an infant you can never measure a godly church like that you can measure the quality of the church by looking at the disciples there how is their interpersonal relationship how are they treating their spouses how are they treating their children you go to their home you see godliness there you give mark to that because you know gold silver precious stones is valuable than wood hay and straw my dear people of god all our efforts will one day be tested by fire because that word says look at verse 13 their work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light it will be revealed with fire fire talks about judgment the eyes of the lord who sees everything through fire will test and read that verse carefully fire will test the quality of each person's work not quantity when you are matured you know quantity is not what matters what matters is quality with quality if quantity comes well and good but just taken up by quantity thinking that 
this is a blessing. If you are judging a church like that, you are judging it wrongly. Judge correctly. Because you are a new covenant believer. You have the spirit inside of you. A person with the spirit makes judgment about all things. He will make judgment about a church. He not only makes judgment about church, he makes judgment about ministers of God. You know what an infant would say about ministers of God? Oh, without him, I would never have been in the place where I am. Without this person, without this person, the whole credit will go to individual. That is the mark of an infant. Spirit-led man should make judgment about all things. Chapter 4.1. Look at chapter 4.1. Because there was fan following in Corinthian church by infants, Paul is correcting them by saying, 4.1, This then is you ought to regard us. You must regard us not as heroes, or big popular stars, you regard us as servants of Christ. Those entrusted with the mysteries of God. You regard us, in the previous verses it says, as gardeners who plant and water. The garden doesn't belong to us. How I wish all the ministers of God in this nation would realize that. Then we could have been done away with this, what he called it, flat screen churches. Then we don't need to do that. We would respect even others. If I am not preaching also, let him preach, it's fine. But why is it in some places only he has to preach? If the person is not there also, here comes flat screen. Why? Why? Lot of it is fan following. Infants will follow that. Matured person would be able to make right judgment. If you see a person drawing people to himself, then he is not connected with the head. If you see a minister of God pointing to Jesus, he is connected with the head. That is how you judge because you are spiritual. Infants would judge by appearance. We are called to judge the world. Not by fan following, not teaching them how you can have fan following. We should be judging the world. I am okay if you people go to another place. It is not my garden. I am only a servant. I am called to water it. I am called to plant it. It belongs to God. I am sharing this with deep agony. I am not sharing this with the spirit of condemnation. I am sharing this with deep pain in my heart. There are many people who are acting God in churches. They are acting God behind the pulpits. They are making people look at them. When a testimony time comes, there is an orientation given. Tell when pastor prayed it happened. Orientation is given. When pastor prayed it happened. So then next week also they come there. We don't need to do this kind of manipulations. A servant of God should know who he is. He is a person who waters plants, but the garden, the building belongs to God. He is only a servant. Only a mature Christian can do that. 2.15 says, a person with the spirit makes judgment about all things. He makes right judgment about a church. He makes right judgment about a minister of God. He makes judgment about his own life. You know what happened to this Corinthian people? They had the Holy Spirit. They were very, very excited about the spiritual gifts. But look at 4.8. 4.8. 1 Corinthians 4.8. Already you have all you want. Have you seen believers like that? All my prayer requests are answered by God's grace. Paul is saying, already you have all you want. Already you have become rich. You have begun to reign. You are in very influential positions. You are beginning to reign. 
This verse will get a little more clarity when you come down to verse 10. Look at verse 10. We are fools for Christ, but you are strong, wise. We are fools, you are wise. We are weak, you are strong. You are honored, we are dishonored. A mature believer would know what is the measuring rod of success in a godly person's life? Let me tell you plain, clear, vividly. Wealth is not the sign of God's favor. Wealth is not the sign of God's favor. We are not Deuteronomy 28 believers. We are 1 Corinthians 4 believers. Paul is saying, we are fools. You are wise. We are weak. You are strong. We are dishonored. You are honored. By the way, wait for a minute. When God called them, Corinthian believers, who were they? They were foolish. Yes? Is that what we read in 1 Corinthians 1.27? They were fools once. They were weak people once. They were not honored once. Now 127 people have become what in 4.10? Fools have become wise. Weak have become strong. Less honored become honored. Yes, I know there is a hymn that goes well with that. And now let the weak say, I am strong, not by influence. Because you have Jesus. That is how the weak should say, I am strong. Now, let the poor say, I am rich. Not because you have a lot of money. Because you have Jesus. The one who is writing had all the three positives. When Jesus called him, he was rich. When Jesus called him, he was strong. When Jesus called him, he was honored. But for the sake of Christ... He became less honored. He became poor. He became weak. This is how you judge correctly. How you judge a person. The person with the spirit should make right judgment. But you hear testimonies of people. Most of the Pentecostal believers would echo 410. Before knowing Christ, we were struggling, but now we have this. Before knowing Christ, there were instances of I having meal only once, but now five times. <laughs> Sad. Before I had instances of going in bus, but now on a morning given day, I am confused which car to take. Because God has blessed me so much. Is that how you judge blessing? I'm not saying car is not required. You have car, use it for God's glory. I'm not saying money is not required. Love of money is the problem. You all need money. I too need money to live in this world. Love of money is dangerous. Keeping things for yourself and saying, I am blessed, is carnality. A spiritual man will hold things loosely. God may give precious things. You may have a job where you Draw maybe 3 lakhs, 4 lakhs rupees a month. I'm not saying Satan has given you that job. No. God may take you to places like that, but don't ever think that 4 lakhs is the mark of God's favor. If that is the case, then we together will explore people who are drawing more than 50 lakhs who doesn't know Christ. Then we should follow their God. When we get money in our hands, we should know how to use. Because a person with the spirit make judgment about all things. We are the ones who must judge the world one day. 1 Corinthians 6, 2. Don't you know that you will judge the world? Are people able to see in our life that money is not really important? Let me make this question very clear, plain clear. Are your colleagues able to look at you and make the decision? I think for him money is not really important. You are judging him. For him money is very important. You are judging him when you are generous. 
I hope you are getting what I am saying. God judges the world by cross. We too must judge the world by our giving. In most of the places, it is the other way. The place where I come from, usually it is the believers who set the trend of how to build houses. To the rest of the world, it is the believers who set the trend. The new styles are introduced by the believers. And their testimony is, it's all by God. And the unbeliever, person without the spirit is looking at it, I will also follow Jesus if I get this. And church growth happens. Actually, we are supposed to judge the world. Even with our house construction, we should not invest so much so that when somebody say Maranatha, no, no, not now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We should be able to say Maranatha from our heart because our roots have not gone in much. You need a house. I need a house. You need a car. I need a car. But let us not be entangled by this. A person with the spirit should make right judgments. If I have this enough, because I am going to leave this world. When you live like that, you don't come under other person's judgment. That's what 2.15 say. A person without the spirit will look at you and say, you are a fool. Don't care. Because 1 Corinthians 4.3, Paul says, I care very little if I am judged by you. I am only looking at one person to judge me on that day with fire so that quality will remain. My dear people of God, all of us seated here, I want to believe that you are not here by accident. God has called you. God has made everything possible for you to come and listen to the sermon. And this is the takeaway. You judge the world by your life because God judged the world by cross, because Paul judged the world by his preaching. You judge the world by your lifestyle.